Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Today for lunch we're going to have a ham casserole. Now it's going to be topped with some puffed pastry and so it's sort of like a ham pie really. But anyway, here are the ingredients we're going to use. And by the way, this is one of my favorites. We're going to use a whole head of uh, just regular cabbage and of course this is not a really big head about eight red potatoes because they hold up really well when they're cooked. They kind of stay together. This is two red bell peppers and they're really squished down in the cup because they were previously frozen, but two, two large red bell peppers will work. And of course it's going to be topped with some puffed pastry. And then we're also going to put in some ham. Now this is um, smoked deli ham and the reason I get this is because it has no preservatives in it and it's really good ham so we're only going to use just a little bit of ham in this enough to flavor it but anyway what I'm going to do is go ahead and oh, cut up my cabbage and steam it I'm also going to cook the potatoes cut into cubes and then we're going to make a white sauce to go on this so once my potatoes and the cabbage get oh, just I cook them just until they're barely soft. All right, when that happens, we'll be back. Okay, we are back. The cabbage is uh, done. The potatoes are done. And I actually cooked the uh, bell peppers, the red bell peppers, in the microwave on high for three minutes. They're done. All right, so we're ready to fix our sauce. So in the skillet, I have melted one stick of butter. I'm going to add one half cup of flour to that. And this is going to make our white sauce. All right, so we're going to add salt to that, maybe half a teaspoon. And we're just really kind of cooking our flour just a little bit. And then we're going to add three cups of half and half once this flour cooks just a little bit. And I've already got my ham sliced up. Now this was eight ounces of uh, smoked deli ham. And I just cut it up into strips. So we're going to let this uh, flour cook just a little bit. And then we're going to add that milk to it. I'm going to take out my whisk because I want it to be somewhat of what's smooth. And we really super like this casserole, and I think uh, this amount would certainly serve eight people. But the reason I'm making more is because it freezes really well. And what I do is freeze it in individual little containers, uh, you know, for that would be one serving. All right, we're ready to add our half and half. Now I've had my half and half sitting out so it's not completely cold. So you want to just use your whisk and just add this half and half into the flour mixture. And that's three cups of half and half. And this is going to be the uh, sauce that kind of pulls everything together in this casserole. Now, once you've made this, it's really not as much trouble as you might think it is. So we're going to let that come up to almost a boil. And let it thicken up just a little bit and we'll be back. Alright, we are ready to put this little ham casserole together. Now this is an 8.5 by 12 inch just Pyrex dish. And I have just lightly greased right around the top edge because I don't really want my puff pastry to stick to that. Now the first layer is going to be the cabbage and it's, there's still a little juice in it so you don't have to worry about that sticking to the bottom. Alright, so we are just going to dump it in. Alright, spread that around in the bottom. 
did not salt this previously, so I'm going to add a little salt to the cabbage. Mash that down. That's still very hot. Next layer is going to be the potatoes. Just going to go ahead and dump them all in. Mash those down. Next layer is the red bell peppers, and these are still kind of hot too. Just put those all over the top of the potatoes. These are very easy just to cook these in the microwave. It only takes about three minutes for them to cook. All right. We're going to top this with the ham. And again, I just cut that into shreds. This is just the uh, uh, smoked deli ham, eight ounces. And this is the Hormel type that doesn't have any preservatives in it. So I'm just going to break some of those pieces apart, dump them all right in. And I dare say this is really fancy enough for company, really. All right, we got that all done. Now it's time for the puffed pastry. Let's get this stuff out of the way. All right, you want to make sure it's mashed down. And we'll get my pastry out and pour the white sauce right over the top of this. Now, I will tell you what I did. I added actually another cup of the half and half because I like my sauces thinner. But um, anyway, you'd have to wait and see how thick it was. But I like mine thinner. All right, so now we're going to pour this all over. This is just a regular white sauce. Now, you want to make sure it gets all down in there. So I just take my little spatula or a knife and just kind of wiggle it around so that sauce runs all the way down even to where the cabbage is. spot without the sauce on it. Now I didn't add any more uh, salt because I actually cooked the potatoes with salt in them and the ham of course is pretty salty so. All right, get all of that sauce out of there. I love just regular white sauce, mm, so good. All right, now this is hot, but we're going to still put our puff pastry right on top of this uh, mixture. All right, I'm going to get my puff pastry out, and we'll be right back. Now I went ahead and rolled out both sheets of puff pastry, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Now this one I rolled out so it will fit my pan. It's been in the refrigerator. So let's see if I can get it off here. Now, yeah, if you leave this out for any length of time, it really doesn't work good. But I love the puff pastry. All right, it's coming off. Slowly, slowly, slowly. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to position this right over this mixture. Now you don't get but one chance at this, so you have to try to get it right the first time. And I just kind of allow it to, you know, go inside here on the edges. All right, now with the second puffed pastry, I just rolled it out just a little bit and I cut it into squares. So I'm going to place this over the top of my other pastry make little diamonds. 
hands. And this is because I love puff pastry. Now we're going to cook this at 400 degrees, which I've already got my oven preheating, for about 30 minutes. Now you'll need to watch it because remember everything in this casserole is already done. So you're not really cooking anything that's in the casserole. All you're really doing is cooking the puffed pastry. See if I can make that look kind of nice by stretching that out a little bit. And I love the puff pastry, so the more the merrier is the way I feel about it. That one go down there like that. That one like that. Alright. Now we're going to just give it a little breathing room. opening up about three little holes right in the middle and now we want to wash it with a uh, egg wash this is just one egg with about a tablespoon of cold water I'm just going to paint this over the whole thing lightly and hopefully this will not boil out in my oven since everything in there is already cooked, that's what I'm hoping for. I hate it when that happens and messes up your oven. But I wanted it to be all the way up at the top. And again, I'm going to make eight servings out of this. All right, it's going in the oven, 400 degrees, for probably about 30 minutes. And again, I keep a close watch on it because I don't want anything to burn. And all we're doing is cooking the puffed pastry. All right, when this gets done, we'll be back. Okay, the uh, ham casserole topped with the puffed pastry is done. It's still bubbling a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to divide this up into eight servings, and I'm going to freeze six of them. Or maybe we'll eat more than that. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll show you my oven. Okay, it boiled over in my oven, still simmering in there. Now, it'll be easy enough to clean up as soon as my oven gets cool, but I need a bigger casserole. So let's go back and look at that again. So this was, uh, I think it's about eight and a half by 12 inch casserole. So I would suggest that you make it in a larger size. And I'm gonna take my own advice and next time I'm gonna make it in a larger size. But I do love that puff pastry like that. Mm, sometimes that's the best part of it. You can see the white sauce down there. And that cabbage. I love cabbage and potatoes together. All right. We will see y'all next time. I hope you'll try this. It really isn't all that uh, hard to make. You just cook the potatoes, cook the cabbage, and cook the red bell peppers, and then make your little sauce, and take your puff pastry out of the refrigerator, and your good to go. All right, we will see y'all next time. All right, I had to come back and show y'all what this looks like. Mm, it is so, so good. So good. All right, there's my piece. And here's what I'm going to freeze. And there are the freezer cartons I'm going to use. I'm going to freeze four pieces of it in uh, individual servings because this really is a complete meal in itself. And then those two smaller pieces we'll probably have for supper tomorrow night. All right, there it is. Maybe I'll take a picture of this for the thumbnail. I don't know. Anyway, I've got my little oven soaking. I'll show you that. With some paper towels and some just regular dish detergent that will come right out. Now here's what happened. I sold my big casserole dish at a garage sale. Now y'all probably know how that goes because once you have a garage sale and all these people are buying all this stuff, you get a little over exuberant and start selling stuff you actually probably need to keep. All right, so we're ready to eat. We've got our tea ready. And as soon as this uh, cools down, I'm going to freeze uh, four of those. Two of them will be for tomorrow night. All right, we will see you all next time.